Matthew Mercer from Lucos Tactical. Today I want to talk about a topic and this comes from a couple articles, one that I read about seven years ago and then one that just popped up uh, recently and it has to do with holsters and the fact that sometimes holsters cause negligent discharges, okay? So what I want to do is break down the two incidents and then see if we can't recreate what happened. The goal of this video is not to point blame at anybody. Okay, what it is, is we wanna always be safer. I'm a huge proponent of firearm safety. Obviously, I'm a responsible gun owner and I know a lot of you are as well. But sometimes what ends up happening is we see an article and we jump to conclusions as to um, what is safe, okay? And we miss what the actual issue was and that was the piece of gear or the training, okay? So what I wanna do is break down kind of the myth from reality quick. The first one is from 2011 where somebody is carrying a Glock 19 in an outside the waistband Galco all leather holster. They get in their vehicle on the passenger side, they turn a little bit in their hole in their seat, gun goes off. Okay, obviously carrying with the round in the chamber like most of us do. Round nicks his hip, goes through the frame of the car, hits the ground, nobody is uh, seriously injured, thank God. Then the second story is from in 2017, so just recently, and this has to do with an all uh, nylon holster. And the idea with this, or the incident occurred where the subject is getting in his vehicle again, this time he's on the driver's side, but doesn't even sit down yet, gun goes off okay through the nylon holster and um, this there's a lot of uh, gray area involved in this uh, incident because there's some missing information that if I interviewed the, the guy who it happened to would have asked some questions we don't know the kind of gun um, we know that it is a Blackhawk all nylon um, holster okay we don't know if his gun was modified or anything like that we don't know anything we just know that he's carrying with a round in the chamber black uh, black hawk all nylon inside the waistband holster we don't uh and we do know that he was carrying um small of the back okay so we know the the, the uh, method of carry right and how he's carrying it so um i want to break these two down because there's a lot of myth surrounding it and there are a lot of jumping to conclusions that occurred from these two um stories and it normally goes down the path of, well, these not the the holsters are themselves are dangerous, or that you know potentially there were some safety um, issues that, that the gun owners weren't weren't following, but that carrying with the round in the chamber is dangerous, or carrying a striker fired gun is dangerous, or carrying a, a firearm without a manual safety external safety is dangerous, and that's what I want to focus on because there are a lot of valid reasons to carry a striker fired gun, to carry a gun without a manual external safety, um, and uh, to carry with the round in the chamber. And if we jump down that road or we go down that road without really analyzing the incidents themselves, um, we can potentially be steering people away or steering ourselves away from being confident in carrying with the round in the chamber or um, doing something that you don't feel comfortable with as far as needing a gun that's a double action uh, only firearm or needing a firearm with a manual external safety and there's nothing wrong with those but we need to base our decisions on what what type of gun we carry based off of the facts okay and what I want to go through now is just kind of trying to recreate the whole incident okay so let's start with the first one with uh, the all leather holster okay now um, the all other holster I have here is not a Galco, but for all intents and purposes, they're, they're all the same. It's two pieces of leather, okay? So this is an all other holster. And I'm gonna use my Glock 27 for this. Um, so before we get started, um, clear nothing in the magazine well, nothing in the chamber. So this gun is definitely clear. So what I wanna do is talk about, um, is it possible to manipulate the trigger with an all leather holster. Some people say I won't use all leather, I just, I'll just i just use Kydex, okay? And there's nothing wrong with Kydex, um, but I wanna make sure if you're steering away from leather, 
you know that you know you know the facts okay so this is a, 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 a worn holster okay I've worn this holster for a long time I've used it a lot and, and it shows some wear but I cannot I could not manipulate this trigger no matter how long I could make this video an hour long trying to manipulate this trigger through here and unless I pierce through this leather um, it, it's not gonna happen okay if you see in the photo of the actual holster that caused the negligent discharge you can see that the holster is so uh, broken in and the area around the trigger guard is so pinched down and kind of folded in there that you could just potentially even not um, you know not being totally aware could just look at that and say something's wrong it's not right so the idea that all other holsters are bad or something like that uh, misses the fact that in this particular case um, the holster was so worn and so unserviceable that it should have been in the trash long before this happened and I'm not blaming the, the guy that, it, that you know this happened to um, he, he admitted in the, in the article probably that you know he should have caught that um, but the issue is is that holster um, was not functioning the way it was designed right um, so goes to show that even with a leather holster they're very very reliable they're very durable and everything but you have to maintain it okay um, you have to make sure that it, it's not broken down so much that that, that area in there gets um, pinched in too much okay where it could actually manipulate the trigger okay so I think in that case um, we can say safely say that um, the issue was more with the uh, holster the holsters condition rather than the holster itself okay so leather holsters very good very durable you have gotta make sure you maintain it and if your gear is unserviceable get rid of it and get something new okay second story was the one recent in 2017 and that was the one with the nylon holster now I have two nylon holsters um, the nylon holster in that incident was a black hawk uh, an all nylon holster. I don't have Blackhawk uh, nylon holsters, but I have two uh, nylon holsters. One is all all nylon, and the other one is kind of a neoprene that, and nylon that's actually probably thinner than nylon. So I wanted to do both of them uh, to see if, if it's uh, likely or possible. So we'll use this one first, and just let me show you that the, the gun is, is cocked, so I want to show you that um, we're trying to manipulate this trigger to the rear, okay? So we'll, we'll know if we take the gun out and the, and the triggers to the rear. So I'm, gonna, I'm pushing in on this really, really hard. And there's no way that I can manipulate this trigger to the rear even, even slightly, okay? Like the leather holster, I would have to pierce through this, this neoprene nylon material and actually pull the trigger, okay? Um, trigger is still still uh, cock so we didn't pull the trigger on that one all nylon let's try that one okay so same thing if it, it, I just can't I can't get it in there okay I can't get my fingers through enough to pull this trigger so the idea of this one where the uh, nylon somehow caused the, the gun to go off uh, not plausible the issue with this is that the user said that he might have um, had his shirt get tucked into the into the trigger, okay, and didn't realize it. Um, and then somehow when he moved around, the uh, the gun went off. So now what I want to do is see if I can't recreate exactly um, this issue where your shirt gets caught in through the trigger guard and somehow. Uh, activates the trigger okay so this gun the uh, it's clear and the trigger is is um, is ready to go okay so we will know if we pull the trigger so I'm going to put my shirt right through here and bunch it up and I'm going to put it in this holster 
and I'm going to holster it. Now, obviously, if you do something like this, um, probably not following many safety rules to begin with, okay? But the idea here is we're trying to recreate this, okay? So an issue that I brought up with the incident was the person carried the gun on the small of the back. Now, it's hard to see when you're holstering or unholstering your gun back here, okay? So I'm not using small of the back. I use a Penix style 99% of the time. Sometimes I, I'll put it on my hip. And that is a, a, a big bonus or positive from carrying like this because you can actually see and deliberately reholster your gun. But let's see if we can't recreate this. So I am gonna pull on my shirt and this doesn't pull the trigger, didn't pull the trigger there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just try to wad this up as much as I can Try it again, okay? Hold on that, still didn't pull the trigger. So how could I get it to work? The only way I could find to get this to work is to actually thread my shirt through the trigger guard and have this wrap up around either the, the uh, grip of the gun or maybe around the back slide of the gun and then pull and you could hear it the gun fired okay how the gun fired so let's try it one more time the only way i could get that to recreate itself is to actually thread this shirt through here holster it and then pin it on the gun itself pin it back on the gun itself and then pull on the on the shirt causing the gun to fire okay that would not for my you know reality would tell me that that would not be an incident that would routinely come up and that would come up without you having some sort of um, idea that something was wrong right um, if you're holstering a gun the the chance of this happening getting through here if you're even remotely paying attention to what you're doing is is pretty pretty rare and then you know all that other the shirt being pinned on top of the gun or something like that uh, not likely okay so other than that you know we kind of looked at the nylon holster the gun didn't go off through externally the trigger externally pressing the gun or pressing the trigger the idea even stated in the article was that uh, the shirt somehow bunched up in the trigger guard and we kind of showed that it's very hard to do. I'm not saying it's impossible to do, but it's very hard to do and it's not very likely. Um, so what is the issue, you know, uh, what can we learn from this incident? Well, number one is that you always have to be safe when you're holstering your firearm regardless of what type of holster, whether it's a Kydex um, or a nylon holster. I've been demonstrating this with a Kydex holster, okay? Um, so, you know, if you have the idea that Kydex is infallible and that, you know, if I have a Kydex holster, nothing can go wrong. You absolutely could have something fall into your Kydex holster, get wedged in there. Your Kydex holster could break um, a piece of, you know, uh, kydex could chip off or or crack and, and be pushed in inward towards your your uh, trigger when you go to reholster it uh, activates that trigger uh, there's screws and and um, clips on your your kydex holsters that can loosen up over time uh, so all this stuff i mean you have to just as much as you check the serviceability of your leather holster you have to do it with your kydex holster too there's no one holster out there that allows you to turn off your brain and forget about the safety rules, okay? There's just not one out there. So I hope you got a lot out of this video. Use your brain, be safe. And I changed my grip dramatically. But he could still have it in his car anyway.
what happens is you, you memorize that position. Awesome experience working with each one of these guys.